In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this cute little box. It's for keeping baby mementos in. It's made of quarter sawn oak and purple heart banding. This box is going to be made from these two pieces of white oak. So I'm going to resaw this in half, and I'll sew, hopefully I'll end up with a lot of three-eighths of an inch pieces for the sides and the ends. This one I'm going to resaw just thin strips off, and this will be the top. After I resaw strips down to approximately three eighths of an inch and I run them through the planer, I always use an auxiliary bed. This is a melamine board. It's slippery and it allows the cutter head to not drop down as far as it has to without an auxiliary bed. Next up, I'll sand all the parts on both sides with uh, 150 grit paper. Next is to cut the sides and the ends. I want the total box to be three and a half inches tall, but I'm going to put a 3 16 inch piece of wood on top, and then I'm going to be cutting an eighth inch cut through here to separate the top and the bottom. So I have to add and subtract those all together, and I end up setting this cut at three and seven sixteenths. Next is the groove for the bottom to fit in. This box will have mitered corners, so I'll first cut a 45 on the ends of each of these, and then I'll set up a stop block to cut the final length. I'm going to get one side and one end out of each of these. This box is going to have a stepped lid on it. What I mean is that when I lift the top off, it's going to be a recess there that it can sit down in. First, I cut a kerf halfway through on the inside of the box. Now, after the box is assembled, I'll adjust the fence so that the blade cuts below that on the outside, and it's, that will cut the rest of the way through, and I'll end up with a lip that the top will sit down over. Okay, everything's cut and prepped, ready for the glue up. I like to put these against a straight edge down here. It's easier for it to line everything up. The next step is to add tape to the outside corners of the box, flip it over, and then install glue on each of the miters. After that's done, I install the bottom, fold everything over on itself, and secure it with tape. I've cut a piece of wood for the top. This will go on like this. The important thing to remember at this point is that you have to make sure you know where that line is right there relative to the outside because this is where you're going this is where I'm going to cut off the top. So it has to be perfect. While the glue is drying on the top, this is what I'm going to use to make the ribbon banding around the outside. It's a strip of purple heart that I have, and I'm going to make it probably about five eighths of an inch wide, and it'll be an eighth of an inch thick or a little bit less. I've measured around this box, and I've got 15 inches this way and 12 inches this way, so I can get all of that out of here. What I'll do is I'll resaw this into strips that are a little over eighth of an inch wide, and then cut them down to actual thickness on the planer. Now I'll spend some time planing the edges smooth with the side of the box. So I've got the top planed down and a part of woodworking is repairing misfortunes. And here's a misfortune that I'm going to have to figure out what to do. 
the last pass with the plane, I had the blade set a little too aggressively and it tore out some wood grain here. Now I could sand this down to make that go away, but I've only got a little over a quarter of an inch here and I don't want to cut it down any thinner. So now I've got to figure out how I want to repair this. So what I came up with as a repair, I put a half inch dado blade in my table saw and cut a groove around there and I'll just inlay some of that purple heart and then I'll go from there. Now I've got the strips cut but they're a little bit too wide. What I need to do is pl hand plane these down so they're a perfect fit in the groove in the box. What I'm using is this beautiful little hand plane. It's made by Bridge City Tool Works. The machining on their tools is just amazing. What this tool is, it's a regular plane, but the sides are adjustable with these screws up and down. You can set this to the thickness of the wood that you want to end up with. What I've done, I've taken a piece of cherry, cut an eighth inch groove in it, and then I'll set the strips in there. And then I'm going to just run this plane over it until it gets down to where it doesn't plane anymore. And then we'll see if it fits in the groove. All right, it's not cutting any more wood. So let's see how it fits. Yeah, perfect fit. It's tight. I mean, it won't even come out. I'm going to have to pick it out. Thank you, Bridge City Tool Works. They didn't send me this, but it'd be great if they did. I've cut the dados for the banding that goes around. Now for the final banding glue up. All taped up. Time for my three o'clock coffee break. Well, that's not good. All right, now comes the truth. See if I can hit that eighth inch line that I've cut on the inside of this box. Now I'm going to put just an eighth inch thick piece of wood in there just to keep this top from flopping off if it, when it cuts apart. So there it is. I sand it around here just a little bit just to ease the corners and it fits on there nicely. That way the lid won't slide off. Now it's some final sanding and put some finish on it. Now I'm going to use this really nice soft velvet to line the bottom of the box. I start with a piece of just poster board. What I'm using is this 3M spray adhesive. I lay this down and try not to have any wrinkles. <clears throat> See how it fits. Yeah, that's nice. Minwax spray lacquer works really well for these small boxes. I spray three coats and sand between each one with 400 grit sandpaper. Thanks for watching and check out some of my other woodworking videos. 
I think you'll enjoy them.